So in uh, tradition of our culture and also um, the tradition of our faith, uh, we're here uh, standing on uh, hallowed ground. Uh, we're not, I'm not here to acknowledge or the unceded land to the Abenaki, nor am I here to talk about who owns this land, but I do know that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Uh, so we're here um, in this place at this time, which is unprecedented. So good afternoon. Uh, my name is Reverend Mark Hughes. I am the executive director of the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance, a minister at New Alpha Missionary Baptist Church as well as the commander of post 782 Howard Plant, Veterans of Foreign Wars, 102 years old, the oldest post in the state. I'm here speaking uh, mostly on behalf of the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance and the role that we play and what it is that you're experiencing here today. As you sit where you are, whether you are family, uh, whether you are friends, uh, whether you are staff, um, whether you are an artist, um, whether you are a community member or friends of any of the aforementioned, um, I just want to emphasize to you that this is indeed an, an unprecedented time. This is indeed an unprecedented time. Uh, right now in the wake of um, a, a global pandemic, a, um, in the wake of also of uh, what we know to be uh, a, um, a racial awakening, not just nationally, but globally. And also um, on, with the uprise of fascism globally and even um, our own democracy uh, swinging and teetering uh, at its very edge. Make no mistake about it. This is an unprecedented time. So this is sobering, but it's also joyful uh, because through the work of the Racial Justice Alliance, uh, some of the things that we're seeing come to fruition are also unprecedented. And in, in, instead of going down a list of legislative accomplishments or even community-oriented work or cultural empowerment-related activities, um, not the least of which was First African Landing Day of the 5th order just this last uh, couple weeks, and even the outreach and education, which we continue to do. Um, I'd rather talk more about the combination of all of those and the birth of a concept that we call Cultural Empowerment Center. And I'd rather uh, focus on the fact and the idea that in, 2000, in, in, 2000, in, in 2020, that we envisioned a place in our community where there would be a convergence of our youth our culture, and our wellness. And I'd rather also focus on the fact that it culminated in 2021 on the first day of November. Now, sadly, we sent a giant home just before that, and his name was Richard Kemp. So befittingly, that cultural empowerment center, as it came into existence, it had to bear his name out of respect, out of honor, to hold him up in perpetuity in this community. So this work is about the cultural empowerment. Make no mistake about it, black people. This is about, this is for black people. This is by black people. And this is the first time in this this city's, or in fact, this state's history that there's been anything created by and for black people, where in which we could conduit or serve as a receptacle those programs and services that have historically been inefficient, ineffective, or non-existent in our communities. So all of our people can get exactly what they need. So make no mistake, that is why we are here. So this is our house. This is what it's all about. This is what we do. Now, with that result, I would say at the epicenter of everything that's happening in here is our culture. Because if our culture did not exist, 
it wouldn't be anything different than anything anybody else is doing anywhere. So everything that we do here is centered, again, in our culture. As my wife would say, nothing about us without us. So just to be clear, that's what, if anybody ever asks any of you, well, what makes Richard Kemp Center so special? What delineates them from what it is that's being done? Oh, we already have that in community. It's already serving us well. Everything is okay. Then what I would expect you would do is to turn squarely to them and say, nothing about us without us. Everybody should just say that once right now. Say it after me. Nothing about us. Nothing about us, without us, without us. And say, say this, what, what makes them different is culture. Thank you, honey. One more time. What makes them different is culture. Okay, thank you for that. And, and, that, and that's good for everybody. Okay? I don't care what you look like. Black culture is good for everybody because it's at the epicenter of who we are as a nation. Right. Which is why we have the 1619 traveling exhibit right in front of you. Because it goes to the heart of who we are as a people. And before I introduce my wife, and I'll have a couple more brief remarks after, uh, after this, and we'll lead into uh, what, I, what I hope to be um, a, a really rich, um, small ceremony, and then you'll You'll get a chance to walk more around, maybe even get a chance to talk to the artists uh, and get a better idea of what it is that you're seeing. Um, but I would say that um, as, we, as we're continuing to do this work and, and you look around today and, you know, first I'm going to talk about the 1619 Project, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about some of, this, some of these other exhibits that are here. Just know and understand that this goes... Again, this goes to the heart of who we are, not just as, a, as black people, but as a nation. How this nation was built, how this nation, every major institution in this nation being informed by the work, the labor, the thoughts, and the contribution of black folks. Every major advancement, everything we know about America, our very culture as American culture. I didn't say black American culture. At its heart comes from us here, black people. And the sooner we can talk about that and the sooner that we can step away from the fact that it is resolved in the academy, there is no question that what I'm saying academically has been, it has been founded, established, and resolved for the last 40 years. The disconnect is societally and also in our community and the politicization of what I'm trying to tell you. But I didn't come here to try to convince you. I just wanted to tell you why we're here. Now, I'm gonna call on a couple names. Uh, Grace and King are in the house. I'm not gonna call you up right now and hopefully at some point or another in the future if you desire, we're going to want to hear from you. But I want to, from the bottom of my heart, um, moving past the 1619 Project, to you, King, to you, Grace, to let you know that we do not take lightly what it is you have accomplished. It, it is not, it does not, it, it, it does, it, it is, it's incomprehensible what it is that you've accomplished. I've looked. I will look again and I will continue to look. There is much, much, too much for me to be able to take on that's, that's back here in this space. You should know, those of you who are here, that this work started in January. Started in January. And these folks have been working their tails off trying to get this massive and awesome exhibit in place. And there is nothing, you can art hop all day long. This is not an art hop, this is a culture stop. So this came from the hearts of these people. This is at, this is at the root of our culture. And if we can embrace this in this place that was designed 
standing on a three-legged stool of youth, wellness, and culture, if we can't embrace that here, if we can't celebrate that today, if we can't prioritize that and make it something that stands out as being important to us, then we've all got problems, and I'm not quite sure why we're here. So if you would, please, please stand on your feet and give, me a, give an applause for Grace and King, and let them know how much you appreciate what it is that they've done. And if it was for me, that would be okay, but really let them know how much you appreciate them. Because this is amazing. This is an amazing day for me. This is an amazing day for all of us. And I will never forget it. This is a big deal. This is a huge deal. I know you're tired, but keep clapping anyway. Now, I've told you a little bit about why we're here and how we got here from the story of the Alliance to the birth of the Richard Kim Center. And we, I've told you a little bit more about what you see around you, whether it's the 1619 Project or, or whether it is the, um, the exhibits that you see in front of you. I'm going, I'm going to say diaspora, which you see in front of you. Um, and we're going to be able to dig a little bit more, deeper into, more deeply into that. But I'm so honored, and I'm so proud, and I'm so humbled, and I'm so fortunate, and I'm so blessed to have a wife in Christine Longmore. I said Longmore because she didn't change her name yet. She, her name is still Longmore. Let me talk about her for a minute. This woman <laughs> right here saved my life. Saved my life. And I will forever be in debt to you. I love you with everything that I have. I would be nothing if it wasn't for you. And the work that we do together brings fulfillment. It brings joy to me in my heart. You surrounded me with your family who, who all love me and put up with me. <laughs> and I, stop it, Kathleen. <laughs> But with all of my heart, you know, and, and I'm, I would say what she's going to tell you, but I'm, that's not my job. She's just coming, and she will speak if she chooses to. <laughs> but I just want to acknowledge the fact that this here is the Richard Kemp Center, and this is our director, Christine. Thank you guys, thank you all for being here. Um, it's really hard to know what to say. And it's kind of hard to come up here behind that, but thank you, I love you too, Mark. Pretty sure you saved me, or God saved us both. So um, I, I do want to just say that, and I've told a couple of people this story, but this really all came out of a visit that Mark and I took to the African American History and Culture Museum and no, they're not like playing, paying me to plug it, but if you haven't been there, go. Black, white, anybody, especially Americans, like go. Any, anyone, actually, anybody in the whole world. It's an incredible place, and the first time that we went, two things that I decided, one was that we had to bring a busload of people down there, and that's why we're running this video. Um, and we did do that, and we'll do it again, and it was a blast. So let me know if you want to go sign up. <laughs> um, and, but the other thing that happened is in the museum, there was a place, there was one display that was uh, showing these Adrinka symbols. And that's, what, that's what's incorporated into the art that you see. And um, the symbols represent slavery, a knot of reconciliation. The other one that looks kind of like a little bird um, is about learning from your past. And then there's also another symbol of God. So that's, you know, just from seeing that display in the museum, and you remember, Mark, I was like, we have to create a mural out of this. And that was a good couple of years ago. I was like, we have to create a, mur a mural out of those symbols 
and we have to create an annual trip to this museum. Um, if, if you, I mean, the, the audio on this isn't playing right now, but maybe afterwards we'll play it. If you hear like what the youth are saying about wanting to go on the trip and learning about their history and also acknowledging the fact that they know that they're not learning the whole history in their schools, it's just, it's so meaningful. And to, and to go down there and have that experience with them and even to come back and reflect on it it's just been so rich. So just to sort of give you the context of how this all came about, and I'm so grateful both to Grace and King and everybody who's supported this, Mark, everybody, our staff, Isaac, Vincent, Winston, all of you, um, this is just fabulous. So thank you for being here. Benjamin, can you please stand? Yes. Winston, can you please stand? Grace, can you please stand? Jada, can you please stand? So, Martha, can you please stand? Kathleen, can you please stand? Stephen, can you please stand? These are Kemp's. Honey, can you please stand? These are Kemp's. This is the Richard Kemp Center. These folks showed up in full force supporting this work. And it's a big deal. If you can't bring family together, how are you gonna bring anybody else together? This right here represents the vast majority of everybody around here that's Kim, the exception of the grandkids. But the thing is, is I just want, because this is, this is not just for you in this room, you're not that special. What this is for is, is that this is being recorded and we're going, to, we're going to keep this into perpetuity. But as you guys stand, you may be seated. Thank you so much. Thank you. Love you all. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Benjamin said, you can't tell me when to sit down. <laughs> and he's right. So here, here's the deal. Um, this is, this is for, for us to be able to look back on. For us to be able to say, remember that time? No, I don't remember that time, but look at this video is to be able to acknowledge the fact that y'all show up, that we show up for each other. That we're, that at the heart of everything that we're doing here is family. And concentric circles beyond that is family, is family. You are family, all of you are family, but it starts with that. Uh, I'm going to invite, um, if possible, um, just a couple remarks um, from the artist and maybe uh, or at least one of the artists, and, and we'll, we'll see. Um, it's just to, just to get a feel for um, what it is you are experiencing, what, is you, what are you seeing, um, what it is that came from the heart. And also I want to open, you know, if possible, if I mean, if possible, just to be able to get um, if there's any questions, but they'll be around um, for later. Um, don't crowd my artists, don't crowd my family. Um, but I do want to, again, thank them uh, for coming. Uh, just a little quick anecdote is, is that um, this work that, that we're doing, um, the cultural aspect of it, it you know, it, can't, it really can't be overstated. And what I mean by that is, is that um, it's impossible for us to be vanilla. We can't, you know, we can't just whitewash everything and, um, and just keep it moving. What we're doing right now is we're doing a number of things at the same time. We're collecting, as the Racial Justice Alliance, we're collecting tons and tons of quantitative data that's racially disaggregated, that's reflecting the disparities across all so social determinants of health. While we're moving forward, very, very important policies, some successful, none gaining as much ground as we'd like. And at the same time, we're teaching the root causes and the impacts, as well as a lot of the outcomes of this thing we call systemic racism in our neighborhoods with our people. And, and what that means is, is as we embrace that, as we, as we understand the impacts, because we know the impacts, we know that there must be community engagement and support to support the people who are in need 
to create those aforementioned programs and services to partner with some of the stakeholders across our communities and so forth. We're doing all of that. So the outreach and the education, the cultural empowerment, the platforms and initiatives, um, the, you know, going back to the cultural empowerment, I, I think is, is, is super important here because, you know, as it intersects with our community engagement and support in this place and over at the Intervale on an annual basis, increasingly, you know, what I'm seeing is, is expressions of culture. I'm seeing the Black Artist Showcase come through here. How many people have seen them? I'm, see, I'm seeing, I'm seeing uh, the Black Artist Market. I'm seeing First Friday happening in this place. I'm seeing uh, Game Night. I ain't never seen a group of folks play spades like that for years and years. I'm seeing chili cook-offs happening in this space. But so, so culture, it, it's manifesting itself in our community not just in the form of cultural arts, but it's manifesting itself you know, in relationships, in, in spaces, affinity spaces, finding places where we can connect where otherwise they didn't exist. So this all comes together. So what I'm trying to get you to see here is, is that this is a big deal. This, is, this right here is just another layer to all of the other stuff that's going on, and we need to be engaged on as many levels as we possibly can, black people. We need to be engaged on as many as levels as we can. So thank you for coming today, and with your consent, King, uh, I'm gonna call you to the mic, and if we can just hear from you, I'd love to hear, take your time, let's hear about the art, let's hear about the work. Ready? Yes, sir. Don't stop clapping till he gets up here. I move my voice on the mic. My voice, my voice is very extreme. Yes. yes. How are you, everyone? Your sisters and brothers, it's my honor to see you all here. I do not carve or produce anything without the energy that surrounds me. So when, when, I, when those things that we put forth is only what I see in my presence, my years of traveling to America, all of, all of the hell and the heavens that I did meet here. You understand? So we just keep expressing and expressing. I find that black, you know, black history here is being um, indulged. You know, they're, they're trying to mix and you know, trying to prescript whatever they choose to put in and take away. So I see a lot of black children are low losing themselves. So here's my critical race theory for that. That's, the, that's a replacement for them. Moses marked it in stone, they broke the stones, right? Here's a piece of wood, let it burn with them here, you know? So that's all I could give for, that's all I could give as much as, you know, the soul permits, you know, that's all. There's nothing much to it. It's just a, it's just a message of the past coming to the present. And he said, it's the simple, the compass represents what encycles life, what goes around will come around if it was not taken care of. So we're we just doomed to the same resolve continually. You know, so sisters and brothers, we know I, I love I love all my people, black, white, there. You know, I, my, my, I come from the island of Montserrat. My mother's the Irish, my grandfather's the Irish man. My mother's the, my mother's the Irish woman. My father's the Moor, the Moor, the Moorish Maroon. So in the island we intermixed and they call the black Irish. You see me, you know, and in, in that kind of mixture that we came, I saw, I saw the most extremes of life. I saw, when, I saw when I was a child, uh, the Irish man said, Grendel, my mother's name, you bring home a nigger child, Grendel. And I said, oh, that was five years old. Then over the time, I started to see, understand, where the levels of racism and how hateism, racism is not real, it's an illusion that was indulged by scientists and, and psychologists, and then pre-programmed into society. Then we black people now have accept racism as a natural part of things. And so-called whites, they say, you know, they, 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 they're racist, but they can't even afford to be racist. They don't know racist is to do with wealth. It's to do with the exceedance of speed. So I replaced that in the culture of things. That's all, we, that's all we're putting in the carving. That's what the arts of race are. Just pointing to the memories of things that are and where things are headed. And where things shouldn't be. So it's past, present, and future, whichever, you, whichever part of it you choose to accept, you know. 
You know, I'm, a, I'm a reclusive man, so maybe not my end, you know. <laughs> I used to run very, very reclusive. I stay, to, I stay to the bushes, you know, I'm a mountain man, so yeah, it's a blessing to be here with you all. Yeah. So what I want to do is, is I want to, um, I want to open up some, if there's any questions or anything for, um, for King about any of the art um, that you've seen so far, I want to give you an opportunity to do so. We've got a mic that's going to be coming around the room. If you have any questions at all, if you, want to, if you wouldn't mind just standing up and saying what it is you're going to say, and King, come back to the mic, please. Well, we got we got video to be concerned about too. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> it's, it's all about accessibility. So, I just want to say first and foremost, Grace and King, like hard body. Yes. You know, <laughs> when, you, when you look when you really look at those photos and you really take a chance to stop, pause, and connect, you can see yourself in the past, present, and future. And it's, it's not just, as Mark say, an uh, um, uh, art hop. This is a cultural empowerment center. And we are really, really, really changing the lives of not just ourselves, but our community. So just, you know, I just want to give both of you, you know, your flowers for really, really enhancing the community by sharing this piece and, and pouring out what, you, what you've done because it's, it's not only going to be uplifting for us, but it's going to be uplifting for the community members that, that's uh, soon to come and soon to be here as well. So I just wanted to say thank you. You're welcome, brothers and sisters. Thank you all, but it's good to thank you for it. We thank the Most High God. That's why that was the blessing that was given to, you, to Mama, to, to Jada. Look where Jada, I saw Jada, I saw Jada many years ago. You know what I'm saying? That's my love. I started many years ago, and from that time, just connected that into a family. So all, all time just takes a cycle and twist. You know, then that's all, that's all, you know, family begets family. But family, the word family is a simple word. It also comes to the word familiar. So familiarization is not, is not the closest of family, but whom you're most familiar with. That becomes family. So you understand, so you know, it's only, it's only the return of self. I'm not taking from not taking anything or giving anything. It's you that it is. You created that. You know? That's what you all created. Anybody else? Other questions? Other comments? Any comments? I have a question. I have a question I'll ask him Oh, you're just gonna ask him by himself, I see. It's a personal question. Others? Well, King, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks so for much. coming. <laughs> Give it up for King and Grace again, please. <laughs> so, I mean, like, I mean, really give it up. Really give it up. Really give it up. Make yourself tired. So, um, thank you. You are welcome. You are welcome. Anytime. He, he said he sees me come through the struggle. You bet your butt I come through the struggle. <laughs> so listen, here's what we're going to do now. I, I want to, um, first of all, I just want to thank you, thank you all for coming out, for those who, who have come. Again, um, this is great. Uh, we've got um, you know, what looks like just some amazing work back here. And I just wanted to say one thing about one piece. Um, and that's... Um, the one that's the second from the right here, um, as you look back there, and you're going to see, um, for those of you who are watching, we're so clever that we're getting ready to just focus in on it right now. You're going to see it right over my shoulder. Um, and um, I, I was reminded, Grace, of a, a work that you did, um, and it wasn't as um, fantastical. It was amazing, but it wasn't like big. It was probably like about... This big? No, it's bigger than that. Yeah. That big? Yeah, look at that. Okay. You don't even know what I'm talking about. Yeah, she you do? Okay. But I'm, re I'm reminded of it because it was hanging on the wall in, in our room 
for a while. And it, it, it just had so, it was so rich with so many messages and so many symbols and there's so many connections. And, and, and actually it was painful. It was painful to look at because what it was actually communicating collectively, but it was difficult to process because it was so rich that you had to stand in front of it. So I'm not telling you to stand in front of it because you need to get out the way so the next person can see. But I, but I am saying at least stop for a minute and take a picture of it or something like that. Yes, it's that one, that, that one at the prison there. Yeah, that one. You see it? Um, and um, so I, I want to thank you for that because that brought a lot home to me and really resonated. I'm not taken away from any of the other art at all. But that right there, um, I just highly encourage you to take a very close look at that one in particular, okay? Again, thank you for coming out. I'm going to leave you in the hands of Christine, who at this time is going to, I hope, inform you of anything else you need to be aware of this upcoming out of the Kemp Center and, and also um, properly release you, okay? Christine? So we do have... Um Part of the video you'll see in here is our uh, back in school block party, not back to school, back in school. We purposely did that a little ways into the school year because everybody else was doing the back to school stuff. We got to be different, AD, right? We got to be unique. So we do have a, a back to school thing coming up. We have um, youth movie night every, we just did one last night, second and fourth uh, Fridays. Um, we have game night that we've just gotten started. So I feel like I'm missing something. Vincent, Isaac, yeah, the block party. Yeah, chess club on Tuesday. The block party is the 30th, <laughs> the last Saturday in the month. We'll block off this side of the street. Thank you, Winston, for getting the permit. Um, and as long as it's nice out, we'll be out there like we did before grilling and we have a basketball hoop up and just playing games, hanging out. Um, and I think that's it. The other thing too is that to stay up to date with anything that we have going on, you can visit either the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance website or the Richard Kemp website. So thank you all for coming out. Um, so my name is Grace Longmore. Um, this is the first in the Diaspora series. Um, and so the whole series is really supposed to just kind of shine light on our history as black people and um, black descendants of slaves and also the narrative kind of before slavery and also what's going on currently and even what we could aspire to. And so this first one is really supposed to be more of an ode to what happened or where we were before that all started. So this is the second painting in the Diaspora series. Um, and it's, I think, clearer to kind of understand what it's depicting. Um, it's the passage of slavery um, and, you know, obviously the ocean and just the concept of, you know, the, the arm with the shackle, which also ties into um, another piece that's a couple paintings down. So this is um, the third in the Diaspora series, um, and it's very specifically referencing um, pertinent points in history and our work as black people in the many different things that we've done that have helped build this society that we all live in and some of us flourish in today. And so this is not even close to covering the magnitude of, of what all of that entails, but it does, you know, you can see the cotton field down here. There's a couple of men and also a woman with a child on her back, um, which is, you know, not referencing any specific thing, but definitely historically accurate. Um, men working to build uh, rail, rail, railroad systems, this man, Philip Reed, um, designed the Freedom, uh, the Statue of Freedom that's sitting on top of the U.S. Capitol. The Tuskegee Airmen, um, the inventor of the traffic light and also the gas mask, um, a very prominent historic black chemist, uh, female, and also the first um, heart surgery that happened was done by a black man. 
So this is the fourth painting in the Diaspora series, and I want to keep the comments about it very limited because I want it to be a piece that's reflected upon. Um, but what I will say is that the last few were more of an O2 history. This is really shining light on current events and where some of us unfortunately find ourselves uh, statistically in, in, in this world today. And so this is the fifth and final painting in the Diaspora series. Um, and this one is, you know, kind of ties in well to the one before it. Um, it's really supposed to be an ode to what the future can look like and, and what it should look like and just more of what we should aspire to.